Pause. Oh, there we go. So we are live. Hey, everybody. Uh, so we're on Blab today. Uh, welcome to my community uh, manager, uh, CMGR Hangout. Um, you can also, I guess, I don't know if people are on Twitter joining the chat. We, we, we're over on Twitter, but kind of weird. We also have the live chat and Blab, so whatever floats your boat. Uh, today is Friday, April 15th, um, which I thought was tax day, uh, but somebody told us we had like the weekend, which is uh, that. It's like the nicest thing the government's ever done to me. Um, so uh, I have the weekend now to get my taxes together instead of freaking out trying to get them done today. Um, so today's topic is nothing. We have no topic. It's open mic. Um, in fact, it's so open mic, we said, let's go try Blab, have a seat open. So anyone watching us, please jump in and join. Uh, we have no... Uh, Sherry, Sherry was at a conference for the week. I've been buried in work. Um, and so we are literally just hanging out um and jen why do you think i need nicer people in my life i just don't understand that okay um so what what do you guys want to talk about and I don't know, uh, oh, but i'm really glad we had this hangout to learn that uh tax days until the 18th because i thought i had to do those today <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny Quick so there we go for the win already <laughs> I'm so over the tax conversation because it, apparently we owe the Fed money and that oh. just makes me weep inwardly. So, yeah, anyway. I hate money. <laughs> oh. So, Bree, why don't you tell us about your shorty experience until someone jumps on? Well, I did not go to the shorties. So, oh, okay. um, uh, I have been going the last couple of years um, and fully planned on going, um, but I had a client, uh, let's call it a client emergency. So, I had to go. Um, to KC for the week and uh, just had to kind of move and cancel my plans. But, uh, but the shorty awards are pretty awesome. I mean, um, it's, uh, you know, kind of, uh, it's, it's a great spot to meet all of the, um, wow, what's that? That's pretty cool. Um, it, it's a, uh, the shorty awards, a great spot to meet kind of like the internet um, famous type people. Um, you know, big YouTubers, Snapchatters, um, all of that. So, um, and it's, I think they're on like their, what is it, the eighth annual um, or something like that. So, so pretty exciting. Good for them. So I see we have a question pinned, which, boy, that's pretty neat. Uh, how important are physical conferences for your community? Can virtual conferences replace them? Uh, how about for you, Sherry? You have... Yeah, so I'm going to be that pain and say no virtual conferences can't complain them uh, or replace them, complain that, wow, my brain. See, you can't permanently destroy your brain with a uh, virtual conference. Uh, <laughs> but I, like CMG or Hangout is a virtual conference, really, like every week. Um, but for me, there's no replacement for that face-to-face, -face, um, even off-the-record interaction, if you will. <laughs> um, so that, yeah, that's well, yeah. my two cents. Yeah, that's a really good point. Alan, I'm, we don't Alan, I'm wondering if we can hear you. Alan. Yeah, I, I hope you can. Oh, perfect. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah something with my webcam. I'm going to try to fix that here. But no, thanks. Thanks for uh, uh, letting me uh, ask this question. It's uh, I, I was just curious. I mean, you, you've obviously been uh, putting together this conference, and I know that at Magento you do a lot of those. So I was kind of curious about your your thoughts on what are you know the most important things for uh, you know for setting up a conference is how important are they to your community and kind of uh, you know I, 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 here we have four people in four different locations chatting about something. I mean, are there ways that we can use technology to to bridge those gaps? Maybe not uh, to completely replace them but to, you know, uh, fill in for additional, uh, additional conferences. I think, I think absolutely, I think absolutely virtual gives us the ability to stay connected throughout the year. Um, but there's still something like, like Sherry said, there's still something about like getting together in person. Um, and, uh, I mean, for me personally, it's like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of literally that like physical touch, right? It's like the handshake, the hug, the high five, um, sharing a drink, um, staying up too late, you know, and sort of, sort of experiencing things together um, that, that are difficult in, in a virtual environment. Um, but who knows, as VR gets more and more advanced, um, we may get to a point where our brains can experience similar type things. Yeah, but you can't hug over the internet. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, no, but it's, uh, we did have people kind of loop in community members who weren't able to be there, whether it was um, by Periscope or 
we did bring um, we did bring someone into the hang uh, the hackathon via some video conferencing. I don't know which one they used. Um, uh, so that they could kind of coordinate anyone who wasn't actually on site but wanted to participate in the hackathon. Um, so there was that. And yeah, we had people periscoping. A lot of our attendees actually um, connect via Twitter as well during the conference. Um, so some of that interaction is available to those who couldn't make it. Um, but we have, like, conferences are so important for us. So we this was our big one that we have every year in Vegas. Um, and then we have three or four smaller ones in like France and Australia and the UK. And then our community actually organizes conferences in like something like 24 different countries at least. They're always adding to that and then meetups all around the world. So for our community, it's very, very important to get everyone away from their computers and in person together. Um, so. Yeah, I think no, go ahead, Alan. Well, I, I was going to say, Sherry, I mean, your, your community is is developers on Magento, and I mean, they are in front of their computers all the time. So getting them out of that, I, I imagine, is is just a, a, an added perk, right? So getting some getting some sunlight, getting some uh, face-to-face time with humans is probably a, a, an added benefit that, that goes a long way to uh, keeping that community. Yeah, for sure. And we, we do so many fun things like before the conference even starts and we're in person, like um, one of our community members organizes a run. So this year, instead of joining someone else's race, we actually he actually like made his own like shirts. Actually, I'm wearing like the shirt from it. Um, medals, had people sponsor, brought in water snacks. And 80 people signed up for this completely like as but unorganized run. Right. So like there's no like official timing. We didn't even have an official like turnaround point. The first tunnel, it was like sort of around a mile. If you made it all the way, to, we're probably actually running like 8K all together. So it, but to have people together in that environment and be able to cheer each other on and um, compete together and just talk while you run like. It's just It happens. Shoot, it that's happens. Sherry's internet. Yeah. Yeah. Sherry's back. internet just doesn't like live video sometimes. Are you back, Sherry? You, you glitched for a sec. Did I glitch? Where did I glitch at? You just froze for a minute. Here now. You probably said something really rad and we totally Oh, because oh, I did just stop talking abruptly and no one joined in. Oh. <laughs> 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 I was not <laughs> <laughs> now, I was going to say that I second the notion that, like, virtual meetings, being able to do this is so cool because we couldn't do this every Friday, whether it's Hangouts or Blab. We, we couldn't even do this, you know? So it's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. But I think when it comes to in person events, conferences, whatever they are, where the people get to come together, you can't beat that. Like, you just cannot duplicate that through a screen. I mean, there are things that you might, you know, activities that you might do or just little nuances to being in person like i just met sherry and brew in person this january but like the experience of being there with them during the whole cmat event versus like just being able to see them online was awesome so but yeah, i do like that we can do more i do like that we can do a lot more now and that we can attend things virtually that just wouldn't be an option and i think that's really cool cool yeah, that's kind of where I was, but uh, it's good to have that validated. And yeah, let's uh, figure out some ways we can help our communities uh, physically and uh, virtually. Thanks for thanks for answering. I'll Alan, what do you, Alan, before you what? pop off, okay, what do you guys do at Rackspace for off um, offline? Do you do anything for your communities it's offline? Yeah, we do. So we have a couple of different uh, events. So first of all, we attend a lot of conferences um, all over the place. Um, uh, all over the world. Uh, we host a series of conferences we call Rackspace Solve. Uh, those are, um, uh, we, we had one in New York not too long ago, uh, Mexico City just a couple of weeks ago, and then we're heading out to San Francisco in, a, I think, in August. And uh, those are just kind of uh, ways that we can show uh, the solutions that we're providing for our customers. So we uh, we talk about different things that we're doing. We talk, we bring on customers to talk about how they are using uh, Rackspace to solve their business problems, and and we really get to share that. And it, it is that thing where I mean, it is so much more than just uh, you know sending out a white paper or talking you know virtually. Um, so you you actually do get to sit down and talk and and really um, 
pick up on the nuances of, of in-person communication. So, uh, but, so those are the ones that we present, but then there's a lot of uh, other places where we go and we attend either as sponsors or, uh, or, or vendors. And again, it's one of those things where you can stand at a booth and, and talk to 50, hundred people during the day and, and, you know, really get to hear their stories and find out what's going on with them and, uh, listen. I mean, that's, that's, that's really what, uh, what I usually do is, is go and listen. So cool. All right. I'll hop off and let someone else uh, have a turn. Thanks, guys. Yeah, somebody jump in. Thanks. Thanks, Alan. Good to see you. Alan's awesome. I love, so by the way, guys, I don't know if you caught this, but if you type slash Q in the chat, um, then you act, then it asks an official question, which then we can kind of pin in and then bring you in. And so, uh, yeah, just like make some stuff up and uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Hashtag make shit up. I have a question, Kristen. What's the uh, appropriate amount of like hands up being on Blab? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't even pay attention to that anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I do feel bad that I don't that I only have twenty three. Um, I was hoping to be at least by the number forty two by now. Um, you have to bribe people. What will you do if they get to a certain number? I just want to be a contrarian and I don't want any, I don't want any hands ups. I want none. Thanks. Thanks, Adrian. <laughs> so yeah, it, actually I meant 142 if you wouldn't mind. Um, just, uh, I get obsessed because I love clicking, you know, I just love like, it's like a game. And so I sit there and see like how fast I can vibrate my finger on the mouse um, and, you know, and just blow somebody up with the, with the props, right? They're called props. Yeah, they used to be called feels, which was yeah. Kind of I like that better. Because um, like, then you could be like, "Come on, we'll give me the feels." All right, question. This is uh, from Aaron. Thanks for hanging out with us, Aaron. Aaron says, "What are the most important strategic pillars to keep in mind when building an offline community strategy around an already engaged online community?" Okay, so let's break this down. Strategic pillars to keep in mind when building an offline community strategy. So, so we're gonna we're basically figuring out how to take we, we have an online community and we want to bring them offline. So I think I think probably well, Aaron, could you pop in? Actually, that'd be kind of cool. I don't know if you can or not, um, but I believe if do we have to close out this question? Oh, okay, so yeah, if you want to click join. We'd love to have you in here and, and talk about this. Or not. Nah. Oh, there you go. Show callers. Boom. Click anywhere to close sidebar. What am I doing? Oh, except. Hi. Hey, look Aaron? at that. Is, yeah. Hey, Aaron. Cool. Hi, guys. Yeah, hey, this worked out. Hey, All right. Hey, so. Welcome. Thank you. So, so I would think, I would think, you know, um, uh, I guess. From from a from a strategy standpoint, uh, really, really, I would ask like, kind of what what your current pillars would be online, and and I would assume that a lot of them would would kind of a lot of strategy would be mimicked offline, right? I mean, you wanna if you're if if one of your pillars is like um, you know building advocates, you know you'd want to get you'd want to get somebody off, you know you'd want to focus offline um, to make sure that you know you have. It, you know, it, whether it's a community event or, or something like that, that someone's rallying behind sort of being that advocate there. But I, I don't know. I mean, Sherry, you, you, you are in both online and offline. I mean, do is for me, for me, I don't know if there's much difference as far as strategy goes. Yeah. I mean, it depends on your goals, right? So we have an entire events team that plans person, a director of thought leadership. Um, so they, they do all of that. Um, but your goals are really, I mean, you're, you're still looking back to your business objectives, right? right? Like that's what you're on the filter on too. So you're still looking at what are we trying to accomplish by bringing everyone together? Is it education? Is it awareness? Is it um, marketing? So for us, actually, our conferences are big marketing events for us. It's letting everyone know about the new products that are coming out. It's bringing our actual team um, to talk deep level with our community about products and being available for them to do some actual in-person Q&A that they, they might not have access to normally because maybe the team is like heads down writing code or whatever it may be. 
Um, so really it's going back to, and, and maybe they're not exactly the same strategic pillars as online, but going back to, okay, so what are our goals overall as a company? And what are our goals in having this event? And basically what can we look back to at the end of it to say, hey, this was really a successful event. So our team just started traveling back like the last couple of days, the event officially on Wednesday, but already there's a string of emails going back and forth internally about takeaways from the event. It's recaps of key conversations and key points with key people. Um, it's feedback on product launches. It's um, what went well at the event and what didn't. And so to be able to have that kind of feedback and bring that back um, is totally priceless for us. Cool. I don't know if that helps answer your question though. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to, to add a little bit of color, um, so I work at uh, Squarespace, and we are in the midst of launching a, well, actually, we just did uh, last Thursday, we launched a um, professional user community um, that, like, kind of rides in tandem with our regular community. So we have, like, we already have an online community for regular customers who are building who are using the the platform in, in a, a much like lower way than our professional users who are like serial like website creators and um you know we've already seen a lot of uh like satellite communities pop up around our product and we're trying to first like bring everyone together in a centralized kind of nexus way and then um outside of that we're going to like slowly launch an offline um like strategy and what I've identified are like two key problems, like one being education. So that would be like more workshops and things. And then the other would be like mixers and like a way of building a much more casual like community relationship, I suppose. Um, and so, yeah, so that that's kind of like where I'm coming from, but that, that's incredibly helpful. Cool. Yeah. And I think, I mean, you can accomplish a lot of things together right like you have a mixer while people are coming in and getting settled to kind of break the ice you you then have like the education knowledge portion of it and then you wrap it up again with more of a chance to right. drink eat chat like relaxed atmosphere where people feel comfortable but they've got like something to sort of guide their conversation so they're not awkwardly staring Definitely. at each other great cool anyone else or i'll just kind of pop on out of here and keep up thing <laughs> popping on cool. there Good to see yeah, you. thanks for having yeah, on, Erin. Yeah, thanks for the guys, question. Thanks for doing this. This is always, I always listen in. So, you guys are doing awesome oh, stuff. Oh, great. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Looks like we have a question from Stuart. Do you want to jump on, Stuart? Hang on. A let's pin context. the question first. So, Sorry. Stuart asks, yeah, well, I don't, I'm just following, following the flow here. Stuart, <laughs> uh, which tools do you leverage to identify spaces for new micro communities? Um, then we close that and we say, Hey, Stuart, jump on in. Oops. Oh, hell. I'm trying to close it, but it won't let me. So by the time we finish this hour, do we get to say that we're blab experts and sell our services? You could have done that before you came in. <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't think I count. I couldn't even figure out how to hear the blab, let alone. Okay. Make myself uh, be heard. I can't unpin it either. What'd you do, my man? I don't know. I just clicked pin. Brew broke it. I'm the shit out of that one. Brew broke it. Mm. Oh. <laughs> what if I pop it. out so Stuart can join? No, no, no. I'll pop out. I'll go. <laughs> wait. Everyone wait, wants to. Me? Okay, wait. Oh, here we go. We're broken. Did you see it just. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, now we lost both. Now we... <laughs> yeah, now we can get like here. So, yeah, right, so, so now we need Stuart or someone, someone jump on. <laughs> yeah, someone pop in. Otherwise, it's weird. It's just Sherry and I trying to high five each it's other. It's the Sherry and Brew show. Woo -woo. So, oh, there, we go. there he is. Perhaps. Come on, <laughs> oh, there we go. There hey, 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 how are you? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Great, fantastic. I already forgot your question. <laughs> no, um, it was, because yeah, I can I can rephrase it. So uh, yeah. my question was, uh, what types of tools do uh, other people running communities or community managers use uh, to kind of find um, new places for their community to expand to? And I kind of said micro communities, but um, 
I, what, what I was kind of looking at in terms of that is do, with if you're always active in your community and you're always monitoring it, you always see how things shift, right? And ideally, there's like a home base, kind of like uh, David mentioned. There's there's like kind of a home base where you want everybody to land sometimes, but that's not necessarily the place where everybody's always going to live. So uh, depending on who your audience is, you sometimes need to adjust your community strategy to make sure that you're targeting those folks effectively. So what what kind of tools are out there that everyone else leverages uh, to kind of find those places based upon your audience and then try to develop a community within that network? So so although although it's very limited to just Twitter, um, I've uh, I've definitely had some great uh, results with Get Little Bird or Little Bird, I suppose that's their, their URL is Get Little Bird. Um, but um, you know, it's basically just um, number one, starting with uh, the actual community members, seeing who they're linked to, and then looking at what topics that those people are talking about. Um, to not necessarily always then jump right back to Twitter, but um, possibly you know even where, where you might go in other places on the internet. Um, and uh, and I know what was the a couple episodes ago, Sherry, we had we had somebody on who had another tool, and I can't remember what that was called. Um, you mean with all the patterns, the networks that you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. That was um, Node oh, Excel. Shoot. Right? Node Excel. Yes, well, Node Excel. Node Excel. Yep. Node Excel. Yeah. Yep. So, so Little Bird, Node Excel. Um, those are good, at least from you know, like tools that can help you sort of dig around topics and people I and think, how they might be connected. Right. I think Zoom does that too. I'm yeah. Probably. Yep. And there's Zoom another Zoom. one called, and I love Zoom, and I love the people that work at Zoom, and I love their community the manager. Shout out to Gabby Yoakum. Um, but I was going to say there's another tool called Group High, because um, now that I work with Jay's team, I have access to all kinds of shit that I never could use before. <laughs> so um, it's called Group High, and it's pretty cool because you can like, it's basically like an internet snooper. So like, if you put in a subject or a person or whatever, it'll come back to you with like all the places that that person is on the internet. So then you have this whole network of information about people. Here's their blog. Here's all their different social profiles. Here's things about them on the web. And then you have like, so you have this like huge amount of information, but it's highly sortable. Um, so that one's pretty cool um, for that. And then uh, some Michael says simply measured and also mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, historian says audio sense, which is the former social bro. Um, and, you know, and I, I'll, I'll be, and I'll be honest, like I, I've, uh, tapped into new communities just by sort of, um, getting tunnel vision on certain users. Right. And so, um, and, and just, and just sort of like watching them reading through their feed, like, oh, what's this hashtag or what's this topic or what's this fandom or, you know, whatever. Right. And just kind of slowly figuring out who everyone's talking to and, taking notes the old fashioned way. That's, that's another way to do it without a tool. Uh, let's see. Cool. Awesome. Out, um, Stuart, before you leave, yeah. Alan has a question for you. He wants to know if you got contact lenses. Uh, no, uh, that's uh, LASIK for the win. I'm actually mm -hmm. going to drop out here in a second and just fill my eyes with contact lens saline again, because in 20 seconds, my eyes dry out right now. So. It's that great. sounds really fun, but I'm sure you'll <laughs> yeah. reap the benefits shortly when you recover. <laughs> it's always fantastic when you go into meetings and people think you're crying all the time. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just right, that. So how, long, and how, and how long will that last? Did they tell you like oh, a couple weeks? A okay. couple weeks. It'll be. It'll, it, I mean, yeah, it, it, it won't. It won't last long. Just just don't until I go through the the meds. <laughs> <laughs> you could be like a method actor. You know, like, yeah, I mean, it actually helps when you're doing budget negotiations. You're like, listen, guys, I need, that, I need, I need that. I need a little bit more. Just They're like, geez, Stuart's so sensitive. A little bit more. Look at this condition right here. All right. I'll hop out. Let someone else. Well, thanks, Stuart. Thanks. Uh, all right. Who else has a, uh, anybody else who's hanging out with us? What, what's going on on Twitter right now? Do we have a Twitter chat? Not a damn thing. I've been firing out the questions that have come oh, up. Okay, but it's cool. really, I mean, everybody's just kind of hanging out in here. I think. Everyone's here, right? Okay, so great. It's all good. That makes sense. 
Yeah, there's some people tweeting some of the stuff from it, but there's no questions in there. It's easier to bring them in here. <laughs> Why does that yeah. I see a lot of people chatting on the sidebar that should come in here, though, like Adrian, David, Exactly, these Nicole. are not shy people. Not to call you guys out, but calling you out. Talking to you. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we, sort of, we sort of went from, like, <laughs> open mic to EMA. <laughs> Adrian. <laughs> Yeah, um, Adrian was messaging me yesterday with a whole bunch of topic ideas, so I know he's got stuff on his mind. David DeWald, you're not shy. <laughs> yeah, try to sell that somewhere else, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know you better. I think we Nicole, know you better. Nicole, go find a conference room. You should totally do that. <laughs> yeah, Nicole, that's all right that you sit in the middle of the room. You can just still pop on and whisper. It's Professional fine. development. That's what this is. No, go. No, you're you sounded like legit. I was just feeling air. Oh, I was just feeling too, but I was gonna point out so um Kristen was talking about how you have like access to um like so many tools that you didn't have access to before. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you wanted to share maybe a little bit like what it's like to be able to actually like strategize with a budget versus strategize <laughs> without one. Like, I don't know about you, but I found it really awesome to be able to be like, okay, so this tool or this thing or this like um, initiative that I'd like to do costs X, Y, and Z, but it would be really awesome and here's reasons why. And people are like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it's just a totally different way to build community. I don't know if you had thoughts on that too. No, I mean, honestly, like I feel, and I really hope Jay never watches this. Um, I really feel like I'm not even using the tools to their fullest because we have so many and they all do so much that like literally that would be a full-time gig if I just wanted to tool the shit out of everything. So there's that. So I always feel like I could be, I, I could use them better and more, but I also think it's interesting that like I nerd out over these tools. They're really robust and they, and they do a lot, but it's still the same idea as when I was using smaller, more accessible, cheaper tools in the sense that, there's no one that does everything that I need. There's still segmentation. There's still like more than one might do it, but I like the UI of one better or, you know, whatever. So I'm still using this hodgepodge of tools to get shit done or to get information. Um, I can just get a little bit more now and then I spend more time sorting it. So in a sense, I think the end result is the same. I'm just doing more volume. Yeah, I've, you know, it's funny because I've just like over the time just gotten real scrappy with like scripting and scraping and, you know, like Google spreadsheet plugins and stuff like that to just start gathering and sorting different things that we've we've needed. Yeah. Uh, anybody else uh, who's watching? Oh, here, show caller. Here comes Adrian. It's exciting. Do, 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 do. It's like calling, calling. There he is. Mm. Yeah, I'm actually in the <laughs> office. Was, I'm in the office was, today, so I apologize if the echo. Oh no, no problem. It was pretty cool. Your your avatar like faded into your real face. It was really neat. <laughs> well, what was that talk? Well, you know, everyone knows my favorite topic is Google Analytics. So that's what I was saying. Is that's that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, you know, low budget kind of guy. Uh, I think it's interesting when you start from there because they have some really good tools that uh, kind of get overlooked. Um, that social hub feature where you can kind of see what people are sharing. I mean, I wish like Twitter and Facebook would get over their egos and, and share some of that data, but um, it's great to see some of the data that's in there because you can see what people are sharing and the actions they're taking. And then you can definitely use that as a start off point to start digging deep and seeing things. Yeah. Adrian, I have a question for you. Sure. Um, uh, I, I know uh, I, I've just recently started playing around with Google Analytics again, but I was a big user of Urchin back in the day. Sure. Um, and uh, I know I remember in Urchin, like if you had a site that had logins and passwords, you could actually um, tag people back um, like into Urchin. Does, does Google do that so you can keep track of individual uh, people like in a community setting? So you're technically not allowed to do any personal identifiable information. So no emails or anything like that, but you can connect to CRM to do that kind of thing. Uh, 
personally, I, so b- besides Google Analytics, I spent a lot of time uh, working with a company called PeeWeek, which is an open analytics platform. Uh, I was actually a community manager there too for a while, um, you know, and um, <laughs> what that allows you to do is you, you can fully do all kinds of controlling, tracking people's email, what do they do. I mean, of course, it gets creepy, you know, because a lot of people don't know all the things that can be tracked, but essentially in, in PeeWeek, you can track everything. Um, Google, it's more aggregate, obviously. Um, so Urchin it was different that you could get away with that kind of thing. Google, you have to be a little bit careful because uh, they can actually suspend your account if you're caught. And I think people also get a little freaked out if they view source on their site and they see their email and their information. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> email, I suppose. Yeah, you're right. Um, I was yeah, I was just thinking if there was maybe a, a, a hack to it now or something like you use yeah, like, codes or if you had like the ID, like you can do it through the ID, but the ID can't be something that like I could go in and figure out, oh, that's that's brew and he's looking at this category. <laughs> ah, darn. <laughs> I thought that that'd really make uh, real time analytics awesome. You'd be like, hey, I know exactly who's on my site. Right well, now. let me tell you this way. I know for a fact, well, I won't say who it is, but I, there's sites I've been on because I'm very careful of that, that, that they don't follow the rules. So <laughs> ah. I, it, it, it does happen. It, it does happen yeah. that, that people are tracking. Um, uh, there was a really good plug, and I, I, I forget the name of it. I saw it on 60 Minutes, and it, and, and it, was, uh, it showed you all the places you were being tracked with spiders in. I can't remember the name of it, but maybe someone else does. And um, literally, you could see like all the all the things that were being. I think, I think that's, that's what cool. it was. Hi, Nicole. Hey, guys. Can you hear me? That doesn't look. Yeah, we. You sound great. Yay! That uh, love the background. Good. Yeah, our oh. our colors are neon green and neon orange. Oh, so nice. we have this lovely couch here. It's orange. It's, it's beautiful. Oh, we have a we have a courtyard that has no sun. Oh yeah. <laughs> Is that too? I have a I have a uh, purple camouflage uh, chair. That's oh, those are my colors. Yeah, just rocking purple. the green today. It's, it's pretty exciting. So hi. <laughs> hi. Hey. <laughs> How are uh, you? I'm I'm good. Um, going through all sorts of exciting stuff. I actually I have a person joining my team next week, so there will now be three of us on the marketing team, which is oh, really nice. exciting. <laughs> Um, I think I'm still going to be the only person doing social, but that's okay. Um, I'm seeing Alan's question about Facebook live video, and I can actually speak to that a little bit. Um, yeah. I haven't played with it a ton, but I have been using it um, with a lot of awareness around the way that they're optimizing that for the Facebook news feed. So I don't have a coughing fit online here. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I've been experimenting with it. We did... We actually have a virtual reality installation in the baseball field for the San Francisco Giants. And so I've been meaning to get over there and do like a live tour and things like that. Um, you know, happily, I have the kind of product where watching people do VR demos is really fun. <laughs> um, and I really, I love the, the live video stuff because people don't expect the level of curation that you get. Um, I've, I've been holding off on launching a Snapchat channel and things like that for our company because I don't have anyone to create 2D video very well. So I'm really a big fan of the live video stuff. Um, I like that it's, it's live and optimized and then you can go back and see it again. And I think it's a really, really great way to bring more personality to the community. One of the things that I've been working on here is the fact that our social media channels are all an anonymous corporate brand. Um, somebody actually tweeted at me last week, like, while well, I have you anonymous social media person. And I was like, hey guys, we need to like give this a personality and let people know who they're talking to when they interact with us online. And that live video is such a, an easy way to do it. And just be like, hey guys, I'm your Twitter person. Here's what's going on. So. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I really like, um, I saw, I saw, um, I saw like you can do live, uh, Facebook live now when you're in an event. And also, I, I think on a um, on a page. Um, but what I, what I think would be interesting is if uh, it could be reversed, right? If you could almost give, like, on an event, almost give permission to everyone attending the event to to um, also publish via Facebook Live, you know, into the event, right? Just like You're just so like today, they could post. You're so <laughs> well, I mean, today 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 yeah. they can post a picture. Today true. they can leave a comment. You know, and so, I mean, so, so we're, we already trust them 
to to document you know our events um how cool would it be is you know if 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 inside that event you know they could they could go live i don't know well what was interesting you're talking about facebook what i'm interested to see just as a, an observer is how the facebook messenger is going to disrupt things as they start pushing uh you know because obviously slack has had a lot of success um but how is that going to impact now that people or even some of the like olark or snap engage because you know yeah i mean look everyone knows i work at a software vendor as well i, I mean but facebook's also pushing into that whole business section so it's kind of a weird time to kind of see all that going on as well yeah. just wait till yeah. it becomes like facebook 360 virtual reality live video <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I cannot we're, wait for that day. We're already seeing that coming in the future. Like, well, they, did you guys they, see the, the VR selfie stick they they put together this week? Yeah, it was exciting. Um, so exciting. No, I think I think one of the biggest things to start doing with the live video. Um, I see so much of it that's you know somebody at an event saying like, "Hey guys, I'm here, and this is the booth at the event I'm at," and things like that. And I think one of the most valuable things is finding ways to be a little bit more creative with it. Um, you know, and while I, I came in and started this saying, oh, I really like that it's not curated and it's sort of on the fly and it's something that I can do in the moment without having to plan anything. I do think it is important to also know, like, as with any piece of content, think about like, why am I doing this? And what am I hoping for people to get out of it? You know, not just filming something for the sake of filming it. Um, the other place that I'm seeing it be really handy is for our efforts on social media to express corporate culture and sort of target recruitment and be able to show people what it's like at our office and the cool things that we're doing because so much of the best stuff that happens um, culture wise is on the fly. It is stuff that you can't plan. And so I think it's really neat to be able to have a way to capture and share that uh, in your community now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's always the thing that it becomes that another channel to manage though. That's the, that's the thing. So it's like, you know, we were just having that conversation the other day about, oh, you know, maybe we should look at Snapchat and Instagram. It's like, guys, like, you know, let's focus <laughs> where, we're, where we're good at. Because, I, I mean, I don't know how sexy a, an Instagram channel of uh, vanilla form software would be. I mean, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm sure it would be great. I, I mean, but. Yeah, I do have the benefit of having a fairly, like, sexy and highly visual product, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, software, um, software is fun, but it's kind of, you know, you also have to pick your moments, uh, right. I guess, as well. But, I mean, it's interesting, too, with the live video, because, I mean, obviously Periscope is in there and Meerkat and uh, however that all plays out, you know, if because it was kind of at yeah. one point, like, everyone was on Periscope. I don't, I mean, and it, even myself, like, I, I got an account right away and I was playing with it and I was like, eh, okay, it's like I've had my blab account for 230 days or whatever it is. And this is probably like the third blab I've been in. Um, so, you know, will it necessarily take off or will it be one of these, you know, are they just trying to go off that Snapchat area I mean, or. I think the biggest difference is with Facebook, you already have your followers on the Facebook page, you know, right. going into Meerkat or, or Periscope and things like that. There's a, there's a, one more barrier to entry as far as getting people to know about it and follow you and watch it. Um, and Facebook, it's it's right there. It's people that are already asking you, yeah, that's you know, true for those those well, kinds of footage and that kind of thing. So, well, Periscope has Twitter's backing, so that's true. It does now, yeah. <laughs> but but I mean, I mean, you you are right though, because pretty much everyone in the world has a Facebook account. Like, if someone tells you they're not on Facebook, they're almost an alien. Like, even <laughs> if they have like a fake a fake Facebook account, like it, it's especially if you're in community or marketing, like how, how could you not have a Facebook account? It almost seems impossible. Like that'd be almost a disqualifier in a job interview. You don't have a yeah. Facebook account? Okay, see you later. I've, I've often <laughs> joked that if I'm ever not like in a social media or, or community job, I might just delete all of my well, that's like, it. accounts. <laughs> just be like, I'm out, I bail. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, essentially, I mean, the, the reality is if, if someone was to apply for a job and, and you looked at their Twitter account and they haven't tweeted in, since 2011 and they have no followers and there's no activity and, it's like, and, and you're applying for a community management job. Okay. Yeah. Maybe they were just really busy. <laughs> yeah. They were, they were yeah. running the, the, you know, their company's account instead of their own. I, there was the depressing day when like the Jaunt account surpassed my personal one. And I was like, I've had my personal one for nine years and this one's been six months. <laughs> it, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. also a great thing. It means I'm doing my job, right? Yeah. Um, well, hi. that's it. Hi, Alan. Hello. Hello. 
Hey, thanks for thanks for answering this question. I mean, it's a lot of interesting uh, interesting aspects on it. Um, it, it was absolutely a one hundred percent selfish question that I asked. So we're we're starting to get into uh, Facebook Live. We just want to see what everybody else is doing. Um, I, I I think that the kind of showing the behind the scenes stuff, putting putting a face to the the name is great. I love mm-hmm. that idea. Trying to find some ways that we can uh, incorporate that as well. Um, Unless you got people aren't camera shy. See, every well, time I put a camera, they run the other way. I, 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 try I am to not camera yeah. shy. So, uh, <laughs> Alan, I would think I would think this would be a great way to give um, some of your customers some OMG moments. You know, like especially at like if you think about it, right? Like maybe you're at maybe you're at a, a conference mm-hmm. um, or you know giving away swag, whatever. And there's somebody who's really important in your community. Um, you know, it'd be great to just flip on, um, you know, from the brand page, Facebook Live, hey, here with, you know, so-and-so and just giving them kind of that elevated um, exposure might be pretty cool. Yeah, that well, well, that's a great idea. I mean, it's something we've done before, but it's one of those things where, hey, uh, you know, this customer uh, tweeted at us and said, uh, you know, Bob down in uh, the support floor did a really great job of getting our site back online. Uh, let's figure out a way that we can, uh, you know, give them some appreciation. We're like, yeah, absolutely. Let's do that. But then you have to grab, you know, somebody has to grab a phone and head down and find Bob and, oh, hey, Bob's at lunch. Okay, wait till Bob gets back, take a camera and go and record it and be like, congratulations on that thing you did an hour ago, Bob. And and then it's uh, the moments pass. But if you can do that within, within you know, a minute or two, I mean, that's a huge that's a huge, uh, you know, like you said, just wow somebody. And uh, yeah, one of yeah. the things we really try to do. So that's a great idea. I'd love to, love to be able to do more of that. Um, one other question that I kind of had for the people that are using already, um, what, what type of things are you, uh, what type of tools are you using to, to do these Facebook live streams? I mean, you can, you can grab an iPhone or an iPod Touch or something like that and start streaming, but uh, it's not great quality. It's not, um, it's, it's not a great uh, experience. Like if people can't hear you, if people can't see what's going on, they're not going to, they're not going to tune in and listen. So what type of tools are you using to overcome, uh, the, the inherent limitations of those platforms? I've, I've pretty much just been using the iPhone and sort of dealing with that. Um, but it is something that we need to figure out and like, look at the tools for, um, being that we're a company that makes cameras, you'd think we could do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, I know, I know I saw an F8 the other day, they have a cute little standalone now that can connect um, and has great audio. Um, yeah, there's so much stuff coming out of that. Um, yeah. There's an API now, so I mean, you might even be able to do some yeah. multi-camera switching and things like that. So really excited to see that. Coming soon, Facebook hardware. <laughs> uh, I know, I know, um, I know early on when we were, um, when we were experimenting with like, let's say Periscope, um, if we had a host like walking people around, they literally just used one of these, uh, you know, headphones plugged into the camera that way you know, it was like the, the little lapel mic or whatever was was a lot better than trying to pick it up from the phone itself. <clears throat> I've also seen people just like literally have like a little handheld mic then jacked in as well. Yeah, I think sound sound is sound is kind of the trickiest part. Yeah, I think sound is really where it falls down because, right. you know. I, th- I think people are more forgiving of, of video than they are of sound. I mean, that's why when we saw Sherry having internet problems, right, Blab degraded down to just the uh, just the audio part of it, right? Because we still can hear what she has to say, uh, even if it's if it's uh, a blurry picture or even they should go back down to the avatar, which uh, gave it a better experience that way. So, um, yeah, that's, a, that's, some, that's some good stuff. So, thanks for answering the question. Yeah, and Historian was saying uh, a Bluetooth headset might work too. Ah. So, yeah. yeah, I can Could see that. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. All right, thanks. Everybody. Well, I love. You well, know, I, uh, oh, okay. sorry, I just, I, no, I'm not going anywhere. I'll stay. I'll wait, stay. I got. I, I was just going to say. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you, you ask your question. Well, all right. I was just going to say it. Like, um, one of the coolest things I thought live stream did, um, early on was they made a a box that you could just connect into like all kinds of different like DSLR equipment and stuff like that, and made it really really easy to send, um, you know, up to live stream. And I think, um. I, 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 it seems like you're going to see a lot of that now for, uh, for Facebook live as well. Um, you know, and, and just the ability to start taking better equipment and having its output go right into Facebook live. So, sorry, go ahead, Adrian. Ask no, no, it was just a quick question. Cause you were saying that you want to use the live video and I, I, I actually wasn't kidding. I have a lot of developers here and when we turn on the cameras, they literally run the other way. So, 
you know, if I wanted to say, hey, behind the scenes of Vanilla, like, hey, we're going to show people hard at work or just say hi to our, you know, our fans and people that want to know how, how it works. They literally just want to run and hide. So, you know, the few times I did a Periscope, it, it was like, hey, I'll just delete this because we don't need evidence of people running. Uh, <laughs> And even, even, I even tried, I, I even tried developer videos, like, you know, where they would explain what they were doing and they're just like, well, what do you want me to say? I'm like, well, can you explain? And they're like, it's a thing that we built. And they're like, great. <laughs> and it was a the question. So it was like, okay, guys, I'll just, I'll take care of it. So if you, if you've seen any of the content, it's usually I've talked to them and I put it into a nice little video and ship it. <laughs> so. Just put so the- something that I saw was pub uh, Facebook's doing that pub and pub or whatever, where they get people to talk over beers. And, mm-hmm. and I know it's a, oh, l- a little, um, you know, I don't know if it's on brand or off brand for your business, but I mean, you get a developer, I'm not saying get them super wasted or anything, but you might get them a little more comfortable uh, and be able to answer some questions if it was in a, a relaxed environment over beers or whiskey or whatever they, or they prefer. You could just do like a series of videos of like sneaking up on engineers and surprising them. <laughs> just, like, attack video. Nicole, it was nice having a job here. I'm sure it would go viral. <laughs> and then subsequently, I would lose my job. But it would do Dude, really I would, well. <laughs> I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it would go viral. I mean, you should see how squirrely these guys can be sometimes. Guys oh, and gals, they can. <laughs> We have those people in our office too. I've what I've done is I've actually identified like the couple of people that are outgoing, like friendly personalities, and I just like totally get them on board and be like, okay, <laughs> the three of you can talk. Let's group you in a corner, pretend you're worth here normally. Well, like, that's, yeah, that that's a great uh, that's a great point. As, as you have more and more people in your organization, you can figure out which ones uh, want mm-hmm. to do that and which ones are good at doing uh, the on the camera stuff. And yeah, when you find that true. that nexus there, that's when you want to. Want to hit up? Uh, I'll, I'll post it in a minute here, but uh, I'm just gonna uh, give Stuart a little grief here. Uh, we we had to shoot a video for a uh, one of our community members that went above and beyond, and uh, he he's in in the London office, so we weren't able to uh, see him in person. I, I lobbied for that, but they wouldn't uh, fly us over there for it. But uh, uh, Stuart had a had a really fun moment trying to uh, get his uh, uh, it, when, he, when he was on camera for the first time. I'm gonna post the outtakes. He he trusted me with the uh, with the raw video footage, and that was a that was a mistake. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, so you've made an outtake video. Oh yeah, it's great. It's great. I'm gonna yeah put that up for everybody to see. But uh, anyway, cool. Thanks for sharing about Facebook Live. It's, it's great stuff. Interesting stuff. And uh, look forward to see what everybody does with it in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I see Stuart's question, and I, I'm, I'm thinking, is he? Because I mean, today some of the platforms already do it. So, for example, uh, you know. Uh, speaking just with my platform, but I, I'm sure the other ones do it. Um, like if we were to post a link to one of your Google Hangouts, people can interact right away in the community because we do um, auto embed. So they would just, they could, you could embed a, the, the CMGR Hangout from Google Hangouts and people can just chat away and have that conversation. So um, I, I think it already, it exists. And I think that the mm-hmm. platforms that aren't going with video, like um, obviously we did a webinar with Wistia. I'm a big fan of, video i think it's uh i think it's crucial because it just adds a personality to your community that uh pictures and writing uh, you know like nicole was mentioning about you know those branded uh twitter accounts that's one of the difficulties of you know it's just kind of a logo and no name but you know if you have a video and people are like oh these are the people behind it i think i think it adds a nice little flavor to it you know what i think is really interesting about kind of this live video is you can get sucked in um, you know, if I if you think about it, like right now we look, okay, 73 people have dropped in and out, 18 people live viewing. We got 18 people sucked in to our conversation. But um, think about the amount of um, marketing, you know, or so to speak, that, that, that would have to happen to get 18 people to watch an hour long video, right? Like th- this would have to be like real, you know. So I think the experience that the fact that it's live, it, it kind of helps connect your community that's true a little bit more than just watching the video you know well what's interesting too is i think you know travel well i don't know i know in the u.s travel is cheap but i'm i'm in canada so to get anywhere in the u.s is very expensive so when people start live broadcasting certain uh, events that i would love to go to but it's just ridiculously expensive just the flight alone uh it's great because you know i get a chance to even even if it's a five or six minute clip like oh you know what i've never been to dreamforce or uh inbound and and seeing that is really cool uh just to get a, an insider perspective of it 
So uh, I'm, all, I'm a big fan of, of the live video. It, I think the issue now is just trying to find a, the quality and, and the curation of it. Cause it's sometimes you'll just, unless you're following the right people, it could be hard to know, uh, you know, who to follow or, or, or where to see it. Yeah. Well, and like, I know another challenge for us, um, things that go really well, whenever we're taking our VR camera and we're out shooting, people love seeing the behind the scenes stuff, but it's always that question of how much can you share yeah, ahead of time? And so there've been some times that I'm like, oh man, I would love to have like a, you know, Facebook live video of us shooting in China, but we don't know if we've got the rights to share that stuff or if that piece of content never sees the light of day, then people are sitting there saying, well, hey, you did this live stream. Where's that, where's that footage? When's that coming out? So, you know, I do think it's something that as much as I'm like all about getting on the bandwagon with it, it does have to be done really thoughtfully. And you do have to think about those things. Um, but Adrian, I totally agree with you. Like for like live events, it's great. I think for teams like ours where we're kind of scattered around the country a little bit, it can be a really great way to even be used internally for community stuff, you know, and, and help our employees all feel connected with each other and part of things. Yeah, we, I mean, we do hang yeah, out but... regularly because we have a lot of mm -hmm. members. It's the only way to, you know, because obviously they can't all fly in all the time. And Right. Yeah, the reason I was asking about why, ha or like if, if we ever think it could be integrated as a minimum kind of viable feature for a platform is mm -hmm. because go going back to what I was talking about earlier with kind of having that home base, if you have a community that's built around something and you're trying to get people into it, I could definitely see where if you were saying, hey, I'm going to be live streaming, it's going to be on our site, it's going to be here, you can do your live Q&A through it. And then while people are there, they're also kind of engaging in your other content or looking at some other things It can be used for doing, I mean, even from a support deflection standpoint, from a, a marketing perspective, if you can get them into your home base, then it might be a way for people to become more engaged with your community or become members. And so that's why I was wondering, like, right now, like, we're in black not on the, the CMGR website, right? So what if this was actually done within that space and now other people who are seeing it for the first time are being exposed to it? So, mm -hmm. so that's kind of what I was talking about is like, what if I'm an, if I'm new to this and I'm watching this for the first time, unless I look at the links that other people have posted, I don't really know where to go. So I, I, if I'm trying to really get the most helpfulness out of what I'm doing, I think maybe in the future doing things like live video, even if it's hosted through another platform, that's being brought in by a feed, at least people are landing in your space and then you can help them find the other places within your site that are helpful to them without them having to go to five or six different places and two or three different platforms. By the way, www.mycmgr.com. <laughs> well, you know, that's, Stuart, that actually brings up a good point, and Brew as well. I mean, the first time I, I heard about CMGR Hangout uh, or, or was actually through the MyCMGR site. I actually wa watched one of the recordings and read the notes that Sherry puts together, and I said, you know, hey, I, you know, I want to get involved and, and, you know, be part of that, and I started to make a part of my regular – routine on Fridays to, to be available to, to watch the stuff or uh, be, be involved. So I, I agree with you. Yeah, it's great that it's live, but also the, the recordings as well, if they have a place to be and, you know, kind of engages in that way. Cause I think it's almost become appointment viewing, you know, it's like, Oh, oh crap, I'm missing CMG or hangout this week. Or, you know, I'm always, it's kind of like almost a TV guide. I want to know what the topic is. Is it something I'm interested in? Yeah. Well, good. Then our um, marketing strategy is working. So, yeah. I, I mean, for, I mean, but I mean, you, you've got your target market, right? Yeah, so, right. yeah, no, I, I, I and, and I think, I think um, that's, that's what I love about just this reoccurring live community is, you know, whether you've been on once or twice, or you just watch, you, you end up feeling so connected because of the video, you know, it's, it's a little bit different than just a regular Twitter chat. So, and yeah, and I, I hate when I'm traveling and I can't, you know, and I have to miss a Friday. I feel like a piece of me is missing. <laughs> yeah. um, I was actually just thinking about the fact that I, I have a couple of weekly calls and I'm like, man, I feel like we'd be so much more productive just doing blab instead. There, there is something really about the visual part and, you know, the fact that I can see you guys nodding as I'm talking. Nicole, uh, Nicole, we're a. That makes a difference. So. Um, at BTC, we're a Google app shop, and we we do all of our calls via um, Google Hangouts, and yeah, it's and, it, and and it's so nice because you can see if someone's multitasking. You know, I mean, it's it, you know, there's there's it, there's so many things that suck just about phone calls because you you have no mm -hmm. idea if they're even listening sometimes, and 
you know, you can't see facial expressions and you have um, the video um, is so, so powerful. That's the, the one dangerous thing about GoToWebinar. The one thing I wish that was in there, but would be dangerous is you can see when people aren't paying attention, which is a, a great thing to see is that, that little exclamation point of, Oh you know, yeah. They put things in the background. It's like, oh, I, I, and, but it's a great cue for me because as I'm giving the webinars, I'm like, oh, okay, that topic is interesting to people. Uh, I've lost some people. Oh, oh, and they're all, all back. All right. <laughs> I watch people's eyes, and if I see them go, if I see their eyes going up and down, I know they're reading something else and not paying attention to the call. So then, like, yeah, so Google Hangouts is great, them. but but sometimes Sorry, what? the quality is bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, hey, Nicole, what do you think about that? You're like, what? Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but, do you, Sorry, my Tinder was blowing up. It's, yeah. <laughs> do, do you guys ever have quality issues with Google Hangout? Because that's one of the things, like, it's inconsistent. That's the challenge that we have sometimes. Yeah. Like, we so, use it a lot, but it's inconsistent. I would say, I would say, um, we no, we never have that problem. Um, and, uh, and, and, and we have people who use it from their phones even. Um, okay. and, uh, and now they just, they just open it up. So our, um, we can have 25 people now, I think on a hangout yeah. at yeah. once, which is really, really cool. Um, we used to have to hack it and have two hangouts and then like share screens and use a conference bridge to bridge the audio. And I, we don't have to do that anymore. So that's nice. Yeah. I mean, they, they do a really good, I mean, we're, we're, we use the same thing. I mean, we, we use their docs, we use their email, yeah. we use their, I mean, it's a solid product, but I, I have to say, I, you know, more I've been spending time on Blab. I'm, I'm liking it. It's just, you know, there's some things I'm like, hey, I wish there was a screen share would be nice. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and, and there's, you know, it took a while to get used to everything, but I could see how that could confuse someone for the first time of all these windows moving and buttons and people's faces at the top and. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Well, um, we, we, I guess people can just hang on this blab for a while if they want, but I'm going to hit um, pause recording.